Thank you very much for checking out the Men in Nutrition video series. We're going to release all the individual snippets in piecemeal fashion. Today we're going to feature Ethan Bergman. Let's show some love to the individual by liking, commenting, sharing, and connecting via social media with each individual. I'm also on the platform Buy Me a Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoy the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Hi, my name is Ethan Bergman, and I'm a professor at Central Washington University in Ellensburg, Washington. I've been here, this is my 35th year I'm just completing, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I'm former president of the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics in 2012-13, I believe, if my three remaining brain cells are still working, functioning correctly. You know, why do we need more men in dietetics? Uh, I think like any area of diversity, it's important to give people with choices, especially in healthcare and, and providing um, information for people about about nutrition, it's important to give them a choice of whether it's a man or a woman or, or whatever the diversity category is you're talking about. And we need to provide that opportunity for people. And if there's uh, only, uh, you know, one type of person to provide information and no choices, it, it kind of reduces the, maybe the amount of um, comfortable feelings that a person might have about seeking seeking healthcare advice from somebody. So I think it's just a matter of giving a, a, give people choices. So um, that's it's an important part of it. So you know I think we've we're only maybe uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of five percent men in nutrition and dietetics, and I think it's important to to get that number up higher to give people the opportunity to talk to somebody who maybe looks like more like them or they feel comfortable with. And that has to do with nutrition. And, you know, I think oftentimes a person um, is seeking somebody that does give them, uh, you know, some comfortable nature and it doesn't always have to be the same, exact same type of person. But, uh, you know, if there's more men, it does give more choices for men to choose a man to talk to about nutrition, dietetics or nutrition and what sorts of foods are appropriate for eating and to deal with whatever issues they're, they're having related to food intake and nutrition. So thanks for putting this together, Angel, and uh, hopefully this will be a good piece of information for people to consider. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today, Ethan. Please uh, take a second to introduce yourself to the group. Sure. Yeah, my name's, my name's Ethan Bergman. Uh, I am currently the chair of the Health Sciences Department at Central Washington University. Uh, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I've been involved in uh, state and also national uh, uh, offices uh, with, with the uh, Washington State uh, Diet Dietetic Association and then Washington State Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and then American Dietetic Association, now the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics over the years. Been at Central for 35 years now, so a couple years. Um, it's an exciting thing to be uh, involved in education of students at this level, and so I've enjoyed that career over the years. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Mm -hmm. So, what I want to know, I guess, a, a couple of questions is how. I guess everyone has a story about how they got into the profession. So. Could you explain to us how you got into the profession? What, what interested you to join this field? Sure, well, um, I kind of came in through a back door. I think many people may have done that, but I was a high school teacher in Alaska and uh, part of my curriculum that I was teaching was uh, health and included nutrition. And I only had one nutrition class. So I decided I'd go to Washington State University for a summer and take a class and it turned into a PhD program. So uh, I kept teaching in Alaska for a few more years. I got five years in up there and then uh, came down and did a PhD at Washington State University and 
my advisor, uh, Dr. Linda Massey at Washington State said, uh, oh, while you're doing your PhD, why don't you become a registered dietitian at the same time? And I said, sure, what's that mean? What do I have to do? So I just had you know, some additional coursework and then I had to do you know, some uh, internship stuff afterwards too. So I did that and uh, it uh, ended up uh, me, uh, one of my classmates uh, was on a sabbatical from Central Washington University. And uh, she said, uh, I'm going to go back for a year, but uh, I'm pregnant and I don't think I'm going to go back. So uh, during that year she went back, she uh, said, there's a job opening at Central Washington University and there I am now. And you know, I had, to apply, <laughs> had to apply for it and go through all that process. But uh, it was a good opportunity because my wife's from Spokane. I'm from Salem, Oregon. So it's kind of part way in between. And, that point uh, all of her parents were still alive and we were in the beginning stages of we had two kids when we got to Ellensburg at uh, in 1986 and we had one more child here so okay. uh, kind of got us into the field through the back door but uh, it's been a wonderful field to be in awesome well thank you for thank you for sharing that um, next question so you did mention a little bit about academia I know that when many people enter the profession, they're typically looking at the clinical realm or the food service realm. What inspired you to keep going into academia? I know that me personally, I flirted with the idea, mm -hmm. but then I recognize that sometimes academia may take a little while to progress through. So what, what, what was it that inspired you to do the PhD and stay in the field? Well, I think, you know, five years of high school teaching, uh, I, I taught, uh, it was a small high school in, in uh, Seward, Alaska, which is on the Kenai Peninsula, a beautiful location. Uh, and my background is in biology and chemistry. I was a biology major, chemistry minor. And uh, so I had the, you know, the chemistry, biology background. And uh, so um, I, when I was teaching at that level, at the high school level, and had the opportunity to see uh, or to, to teach uh, health and then nutrition, you know, it got me even more and more interested. You know, my wife uh, and I were, were pregnant uh, twice in Alaska and then once uh, when we were in Washington and just, you know, looking at what kind of things uh, we really should be doing nutrition wise uh, with supporting the pregnancy and then lactation and then the kids, you know, those sorts of things, uh, you know, trying to support them as they're growing. All that stuff was interesting to me. so. Um, I think probably those areas, uh, just the interest in nutrition, uh, developmental, uh, from the developmental side, I, I basically, I guess I call myself a pediatric uh, nutritionist or dietitian because that's what I've done most of my, my, my uh, career. I've done school meal research. I started out, uh, my PhD research was on, uh, caffeine and mineral loss in women. Uh, so it kind of morph from there but um, I think it, you know basically uh, the teaching in Alaska I love to teach I loved interacting with uh, uh, minds that were developing and um, and then you know getting to teach uh, students at the university level both undergraduate and graduate level uh, I think was you know just uh, something that was very enthralling and uh, stimulating and it was great to see people uh, developing and and you know just, I just have loved it my whole career so uh, now 35 years later uh, it's <laughs> you you've uh, I've, I've had the opportunity to interact with quite a few at the high school and five years of high school now 35 years of the university level and it's just been a wonderful career to see those minds and then do great things Annie Simonis uh, was one of my students uh, and you know see her do great things and there's lots of others that I could name right Okay, well, 40 years of teaching in high school and college, how, what's the number of students you think you've interacted with? Well, I saw, that, I saw that question come through and, you know, I, I don't even know how to count that. Uh, you know, some of them I've taught many times in many classes. So, you know, if you ask, uh, I'd have to get a calculator out, but if you think even 50 students a year over that period of time, have to see what that would you add up to. 
you know, 2,000 students or so. 2,000. Yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. And, wow. you know, you don't know, uh, in some, of, some years there's more than others. Uh, you know, I taught a general nutrition class many times that had 100 students in it. So, you know, you don't know how many, <laughs> how much of an impact you had in, in those sorts of situations. So. Right. Okay. Interesting. So let's move over to state and national involvement. One of the things that I really appreciate about reaching out to some of the folks that I've interviewed is the fact that they are involved on a local, state, or national level. You've been involved with the state. You've been involved nationally. What are, I guess, could you, could you answer why some, someone should be involved in the profession, you know, on a volunteer basis and how has being, you know, involved with the state and national influenced your career? Sure. Uh, well, I, I think everyone uh, has uh, an obligation to give back and uh, to give back to the profession. Um, you know, nutrition and dietetics is treated me very well over the years. And uh, I think, uh, you know, trying to uh, shape the profession is something that uh, I've, I've done, you know, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. But uh, I remember the first uh, Joe Clark, who was the president of then it was the uh, Washington State uh, Dietetic Association. Uh, I was a new kid on the block, moved into Ellensburg. She's from Yakima. She called me and said, do you want to be fundraising chair? And I had no idea what that meant. And then said, well, sure, I'll do it. So I, I went one year and uh, helped as kind of an assistant and then became the fundraising chair and then just took other positions after that and just, you know, uh, to support whatever was needed to, uh, to support the, the association, which then in, then supports the profession. So uh, I think it's just, you know, one of the things that I felt an obligation to, to serve the profession that I was in, and I, I was very young and in at that point, but uh, now 35 years later, it, you know, it has morphed into quite a few different uh, opportunities. And some of the things that I've done, um, I was the uh, public policy coordinator for several years uh, in you know, some of the things that I, that I had served as in the Washington State at that point, uh, Dietetic Association. Um, but I got to do things, you know, uh, trying to promote legislation both in the state and nationally. And, uh, you know, bringing that back to the classroom was very important to uh, share with the students that, you know, this is how you go about making changes in policy that have impacts on uh, our profession, but also the health of uh, people in the state of Washington and, and, and nationally and internationally. Right. So I think, you know, those sorts of opportunities uh, not only, I think, I, I hope I serve those, those uh, uh, in those capacities well, but I also brought them back to the students and you know, tried to share with them the importance of, uh, of using uh, your, your voice and your profession and your, and your uh, training in nutrition and dietetics to, to shape public policy and to shape uh, how that uh, impacts um, your clients out in the field. Okay. And so I, I just said, you know, I, one of the things I keep telling, I have told my students over and over, over, say, sometimes you just have to say yes and not really know how that's going to turn out because you can't always know all the impl implications of, of saying yes when you say yes. But sometimes you just have to kind of take a leap of faith and say, sure, I'll be the fundraising chair and have no idea where that's going to lead you. But um, it leads you down a path. And it's been a very wonderful, you know, profession to be in. I made uh, many, many friends uh, over the years all over the world because, you know, as president, I got to travel internationally too, uh, president of the, of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So, it, you know, it's been something that I've really uh, enjoyed from a standpoint of just um, personal relationships that I've developed that have been also professional relationships. Um, I got to travel to India and speak at the 50th anniversary of the Indian Dietetic Association and um, made a friend there. And we did some uh, 
school meal research in India as a result of that. So that was, you know, one just one highlight. Uh, got to go to Romania when Romania was developing a dietetic association. We got to uh, go to the first Romanian Dietetic Association annual meeting and present there about how we do it in the United States and uh, you know, how impact people in, in that country and their dietetic association. And I just got an Easter message from one of the friends I met while I was in Romania. So, you know, you do professional and, and personal things at the same time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You have the, I guess the, I don't know how you feel about this, but the, the honor and distinction of being the, the second male <laughs> president. How, I guess, with, um, with you teaching in the classroom, one of the things that I kind of have thought about is um, males entering the profession. How have you seen the, have you seen a gradual increase over time in students, more and more students throughout the years? What, what would you say about that? Uh, it's, it's been kind of an interesting uh, phenomenon. I, we see more males now in profession than we did when I first came in. When I first came to Central Washington University, David G, Dr. David G and I were the only two nutrition professors and we were both male. And uh, we thought that just having, you know, having two male uh, faculty members would have an impact, but it took a while for that to really grab hold. We still were predominantly female, and I mean, we still are, but we now we have a higher majority or a higher percentage of, of males than we did uh, when I first came 35 years ago. Right. But it, it wasn't the impact that I thought it would. You know, you, you, we thought that if we had more males, that, that would attract more males into the classes. It didn't seem to do that initially. But, um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that uh, I think it is changing and I think it's, you know, we're getting a higher percentage. I don't know, I haven't followed lately what the percentage is, but we do have more males in our classes and I think nationally as well. It's still a small percentage. Uh, I don't, you probably know what it I, is. About is it still 5%? Yeah, 5%. yeah. It was probably 3% when I started, so it's very slow growth. But, I, will, I will say it was... Two percent when I entered the profession. I think it was two oh, like percent. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're getting more. It's uptick, and I and I think one of the interesting things is that um, as more and more people enter, I know that for me personally, I started with three guys and one left to go do OT. Uh, I transferred to another program. Three of us were in one went to OT, another one became like a physician. So they're kind of like people are scattering and maybe it's the the presence of women in the field. Maybe they weren't aware of that. I entered, I'm like, oh great, this is a science. I had no mm -hmm. idea. It's yeah. been, it doesn't bother me, but I'm just, I know that it's gotten more and more, like more people are being involved. And I know like, you know, one of my videos, I get calls from a lot of students talking about like wanting to join the profession. So I just was wondering from yeah. uh, from the collegiate perspective, what you're seeing. Um, well, the final question for you is what's in the works for your future? Well, we're pretty um, excited right now at Central Washington University because uh, we're, we're a department of health sciences and uh, the program and we're writing a building project right now. Our department is getting a new building. So we've been working for this for the last over a decade to get the funding for it and all the fundings together. And we are right now uh, starting to uh, do the final uh, FF and E purchases, uh, furniture, furnitures, fixtures and equipment for the new building. So the new building will be completed in November. We'll move in December and um, we'll start our classes and labs there in January. Of 2022 and it's just you know kind of a mind-blowing type uh, process to try to get funding it's about um, 81,000 square feet and uh, about a 60 million dollar project that we had worked we worked with the state to get the funding for it and 
Uh, now we're working on other things, you know, donations to try to get program funds together. You know, we're highly, our programs in the department are food science, nutrition, exercise science, clinical physiology, paramedicine, and public health. And uh, all those programs are growing right now. Uh, we have our biggest, uh, uh, we have three master's programs, master's in public health, master's in integrative human physiology, and a master's in master's science and nutrition. And all those programs are at their peak. They're uh, all um, gonna be, they're the biggest they've ever been this year and they're gonna be even bigger next year. So uh, we're growing um, capacity wise and uh, with the new building, it's gonna be wonderful because right now we're spread out over about six buildings on campus. And uh, this will put us all in one location with state-of-the-art equipment, state-of-the-art uh, labs and facilities. So we're, we're just stoked about that. It's just a real exciting process process. If you've never been through a building project, it's really very interesting because we work with architects and now with the facilities people and we're just uh, really excited to get to this point where we'll move in together in uh, one building and, and uh, provide even a more uh, exceptional educational experience for the students. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And my okay. whole uh, you know, future is looking at trying to get us into that new building. Well, you're almost there. I mean, it's kind of, I've seen you post pictures of the project throughout time. So it's kind of amazing to, so, okay. Well, maybe, maybe we could have a, a, a state event there one day or, or something. So you could invite us over, you know. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a nice facility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, other than that, yeah, I want to thank you very much for your time. We appreciate. I know you guys are all busy. It's, uh, is it spring break in college right now, or what? What week is? This spring is break? our this is our first week back. You know, we're a quarter system here, so quarter we're start, just starting spring quarter. We started classes uh, on Tuesday of this week, so this is our first week, and then we'll go until the first week in June. Okay. Okay. Well, I definitely appreciate your time and thank you very much for for all your efforts and volunteer for the profession. I, uh, you know, I, I, I look up to all you guys for all the for all the work that you've done and I'm trying to just carry the mantle forward like everyone else. So, yeah, so we well, appreciate that. We appreciate your efforts too. You do a great job and thanks for doing this. I mean, this is a nice service to, you know, kind of spread this word around. Yeah, well, I think...